Bonjour James. Bonjour. Comment ça va? Ça va et toi? Très bien, merci. What's the market's view on um, on 2020 after having excellent 18 and 19? 2020, uh, the demand from the market uh, is quite strong uh, because uh, indeed after the trilogy 18, 19 and 20, uh, everybody is expecting to receive and enjoy the, the 2020 Bordeaux. Um, so it's very positive, and I think uh, the 20s will uh, enter the market next year mostly. So it will be quite good for uh, customers to enjoy the wine and distributors to have a quite a strong vintage to offer to the customers, even in this uh, not easy economic situations. But uh, the I'm very very positive on a 2020 uh, sales definitely. It's pretty amazing that you had this terrible frost it was in april right around yeah when was it 15 or it something was around the second weeks of april yeah and in the end the damage was wasn't as bad as you thought it would be right no 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 it was not so bad uh, because uh, we did uh, as much as we could to to protect uh, the, the vines during uh, at least uh, four nights in a row uh, and we quite uh, succeed well plus after that uh, axel uh, because we are now 100% biodynamic. So we spray some bourbon and chamomile and different uh, herbs so that to redynamize uh, the, the vineyards. And it was very much successful. And at the end, um, the yield was uh, the same as 2019. So it was really exceptional, really, really exceptional. That's amazing. And, and so by using this, uh, the, these bio, biodynamic um, treatments, How did it repair the damage? Well, in fact, um, by seeing that um, the frost is happening again and again, uh, the first uh, action we had was really to prune lately, uh, end of February, March, end of March, so that to be a, a really in progress with the growing season. And then uh, fighting the, the frost as much as we can. And after that, uh, doing some infusions of herbs so that to redynamize uh, the birds and to because you know it's like uh, everybody if we go outside and if it's freezing we're going to be quite a uh, stress but then after mm -hmm. if we use some infusions then we're going to relax and i think it's the same uh, um, things with uh, the vineyard and we see the result uh, with no damages at all maybe two or three percent but that's nothing compared to so other people who face some bigger injuries but at the end the budding and the flowering season was just perfect and then after the summer was just an unbelievable it was just uh, amazing really amazing it was a fantastic very very fantastic vintage spectacular but that's amazing because so many other people had some major damage and somehow with the, with your biodynamic biodynamically farmed um vineyards And the treatments that just re-energized the vines while other people, they just, you know, they were over. They, the vines didn't come back. Well, uh, after it's, uh, I think, uh, an addition of small details and being accurate in the vineyards. Uh, and that's bring uh, the, well, the crop at the level, which was uh, fantastic. And once again, uh, making wine is, as you know, and uh, a lot of uh, great estates know that, uh, It's inside the vineyard and uh, trying the best to protect our vines uh, because uh, the frost will happen again and again with uh, the climate change. So we need to adapt as once again, uh, we need, we have to adapt. It's not we need, we have to. That's, that's another story. And that's, I think, the, the keys of the future. Was it the same sort of growing season? You had the frost, then it was cold till around um, mid-July. And then you had really hot weather. That was that was sort of the pattern, right? Yeah, and the flowering uh, was done in like five days. It was uh, during the flowering season. We had uh, some nice winds, and beside that, it was sunny, so it was dry. And then after we had some small rains, which was perfect. And then once again in Saint Emilion, we are based on the plateau. So the plateau with the limestone, the estuary, limestone, and the clay retain this water and keep this energy into the vineyard. And thanks to that, uh, within the 
the growing season, the summer, where we had some uh, strong heat temperature during the week, we had about 40 degrees, not like 2022 indeed, but the growing season and the summer season was just perfect. And August was 29, 30 degrees, which was very normal for the, for the season. And September was just, we had an Indian summer with just few rains at the beginning and then poof, perfect. So a number of producers said their alcohols were slightly lower and um, acidity higher in 2020 compared to 19 and certainly 18. What, that wasn't necessarily the growing season. It was really the savoir faire, the like understanding of uh, your vineyards and what to do. Well, I think it's definitely the, the, the key fact. Uh, uh, the problematic of facing uh, increased temperature, climate change uh, will automatically how we will face an increase on potentially high coal level. But then uh, inside the vineyards, we have some tools and some keys to try to reduce that. But moreover, it's a, mostly a question of having a good pH and a good acidity level so that to balance that. Uh, we, we saw that in Napa Valley, we saw that in Australia. When you talk with yeah. the wineries there, they know how to handle our, of course, in, in France, we, don't, we cannot irrigate so far. But I think before going to irrigations, we have all the tools in the vineyards by increasing the canopies, uh, not cutting leaves, try to protect uh, the grapes from the sun. And that's just uh, some key factors. And like also having a full cover of herbs inside the vineyards, which is automatically, uh, drastically decrease the temperature on the soils on 10 degrees temperature, which is huge. And that's just, major. It's uh, like uh, doing permaculture. You know, yeah. So I think we we have the keys. It's just a question of uh, us uh, try to adapt and re and having in mind that uh, we we can face that uh, with natural things. And uh, after indeed uh, nowadays we will have more and more wines on fourteen degrees and above instead of uh, twenty years ago where we had some yeah. thirteen degrees twenty four and five. But it's like this. What about? Uh, how would you compare 2020, your wines, their character and personality to 2019 or 2018? Wow, uh, I think in 2020 vintage, uh, we gain uh, in energy into the wine. Uh, we have much more purity uh, in Croix de la Brie 20 compared to 19 and 18. Uh, it's much more uh, like uh, very linear, uh, very long on the finish, the balancedness. And we saw those details, we think, not sure of that, but we mm -hmm. think that those details are the impact of uh, the switch to biodynamics since uh, seven years ago. So, in fact, we, we start to really see the results by 2020 and the next vintages. But 2020, but Croix de la Brie, for Axel and I, is really... Uh, uh, plenty rich with much more purity in sense of um, texture, uh, acidity, tannins are much more precise, definitely much more precision. Definitely 18 was a richer year. The wines were more flamboyant and rich. Then 19 right away was a move to, uh, to fresher wines, more linear. I really like the balance. And 20, I haven't had your wines yet. But uh, there's many wines that have the same sort of uh, linearity, linear character and freshness, although some wines can be a little bit austere. But yeah. um, I think it's really interesting. It's, uh, it's three vintages that uh, have a lot of excitement and they really are just modern Bordeaux in a very good sense. No? Definitely, yes. And I think uh, we will have, hopefully, more and more vintages like that in terms of characteristic and definition of the wine. But once again, uh, yeah. on the 2020, this it is kind of a multidimensional wine. It's coming like a wave back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. That was a great description of, of sort of what, what happened in 20. And, uh, and we've already tasted about 600 wines. Wow. And we're finding some very beautiful... Uh, and beautifully structured wines too. 
What is also improving in uh, in our estates is the proportion of Cabernet Sauvignon, and ah. with and with 2020, we have like five percent of Cabernet Sauvignon on which we are doing our own massage selection, and the entrance of the Cabernet Franc on three percent. So that's those details which are starting to uh, to adapt also to the to the new wave of uh, the climate of Bordeaux. But the the entrance of the Cabernet Franc in 2020 yeah. is definitely making a, a switch. That's actually a really interesting point. Is that uh, people are using more Cabernet Sauvignon particularly in uh, saint Emile, And uh, that really helps in hotter years. It gives you slightly lower alcohol and more um, backbone tannin structure, right? Yeah, indeed. And uh, we uh, originally at Croix de la Brie, we always had Cabernet Sauvignon and few Cabernet Franc. But since uh, 2020 and 19, we increased the proportion on the blend of the Croix de la Brie with Cabernet Sauvignon. We, the Cabernet Sauvignon are located on the on the plateau and also on the slopes yeah. of Paris. Very old cab. Okay, listen, it was a fun conversation. Uh, I really look forward to catching up with you uh, in April. April when I'm over. Okay, 12C. Big hug. Big hug. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.